Welcome to Igor's physics class. In this little video, we're going to see how to do an XY scatter diagram and then see how to add a trend line and R squared, the coefficient of determination. We might even see a few other linear algebra tricks at the end. First, we need some data. Hey, we're going to click a name. We're going to type number. We're going to have numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we're going to have names, names of students. Then we're going to have um, hours spent studying per week. We know that must be upwards of 40, right? For one class, that is. And then your score on weekly test. Um, and what I did there is I typed and I used the tab key to move this way. Now, I actually want to highlight these cells. And in 2007, I want to add some word wrap right there. Uh, you could use the keyboard shortcut Control-1. That opens up the Format Cells dialog box. And then on the alignment, we can say, um, oh, sorry, right here, we want wrap text. Ooh, that's a little bit too tall. So let's highlight all of the columns like this and actually drag any one of them. Any one of them, maybe even a little bit uh, more. Oh, that's OK, right there. Then I'm going to double click this so it brings it up a little bit. Now I'm going to highlight these, and I'm going to add some colors. How about Control-1, and I'll go to Fill in 2003. That says Patterns, Borders. All right, now I'd like to create some numbers. And I'm going to do a relatively small data set here. I'm going to type 1, Enter, 2, Enter. And then I'm going to highlight the 1 and the 2. And that little thing right there is called the Fill Handle. And if I bring my selection cursor, this thick white cross, right up over the Fill Handle, you see the crosshair or angry rabbit. You can click and drag, and you've established a pattern. Now names. I don't have all the names right now, so we'll just do this. Actually, I'm going to come up here. I'm not going to keep these all the same size. I'm going to double click right there. Double click right there. That's much better. Hours spent studying per, per week. Now, I'm going to highlight this whole range because I want to enter data. Now, the advantage this, to this is then I can go uh, enter data for every line by highlighting it first. Notice there is a um, light colored cell. That's called the active cell. So hours stu uh, spent studying per week, we're going to put 5. And then tab, the test on the score was 75. Tab, this person studied 15 and got 90. Tab, this person studied 25 and got 95. This person studied 10 tab and got 95. This person studied 5 tab and got 52. This person studied 1 and got 65 tab. This person studied uh, 20 and got 100 tab. This person studied 6 hours and got an 82. This person studied 10, uh, 12 hours and got a 72. This person studied uh, 10 hours and got a 75. So that's a, a good way to enter data. Now I'm going to click in any one cell, and I want to highlight the whole data set. You can use the keyboard shortcut Control Asterisk, and the asterisk is on the number pad. Then I'm going to Control 1 and go to Border tab. I'm going to say Outline. Outline, that's around the outside and inside. That puts all the inside ones. Now I want to create a scatter diagram. And I'm going to come up here and hit F2. And I'm very carefully going to type uh, in parentheses x, because that is the independent variable. For us, the number of hours studying per week probably can help us predict what your score is. So this is the independent. And I'm coming here, hit, hit, hit F2. And I'll say y. We also know this as you know, f of x. Enter. Now we have our x and our y. And when you're doing scatter uh, diagrams, you want the x's here and then the y's here. And then Excel can interpret it. You also want to label here and here, because then it will help name the data series. All right, now uh, I'm in 2007, so I, ha I have to show you how to make a chart in 2007. It's totally different than earlier versions. And in my opinion, they should have kept it the same, because boy, it takes a lot more clicks in this version than it did in earlier versions. Go to Insert 
uh, ribbon, then charts group. We want to go to scatter, and then I'm going to click on this first one right here. Now I'm going to see if I can fit this on the screen. Oh, it looks like there's some pattern here, right? Um, we will see that correlation, uh, the correlation, this looks like some, some positive or direct correlation, meaning as hours increase, score increases. I'm going to click on this and uh, use my keyboard shortcut for delete. That's delete. I'm going to click up here, and I'm actually going to edit this. I'm going to see if I can uh, just highlight this and type um, x, y, scatter for hours x and score y and then hit enter so you can I just and then hit enter oh and then I'm gonna click right here oh. XY scatter for hours now very important if you have an XY scatter you better have labels we need labels to say what in the world these numbers mean so in 2007 you go to charts tool uh, design uh, layout not design layout and we want access titles and we want, we'll start with the horizontal. And the horizontal, now we're going to look at a great trick. Um, actually, before we look at that trick, we better scoot down because we're actually going to try and access these cells over here because we already have our labels there. Watch this. You can click on a chart in um, any version and hit the F2 key. Whoa, that puts our cursor up here. If you type equals then, this is X, so we can click there, and now your label is going to be linked to that cell, and then hit Enter. Same with Y. We go up to uh, Layout, Axis, Vertical. I'm going to select uh, this one. And then um, it's selected, so I hit F2. My cursor jumps up there. I hit an Equals, and I click on this. Very important uh, in my statistics class. If you don't have your labels, it's just dead wrong. All right, now let's see how to add... Um, do some other tricky things. What about data points? Um, labels for the data points. We're going to go out to labels and then data labels. And in 2007, you got to go down to more because that's where all the good stuff is. And you can kind of see it emerge. Now we have our values. We could also put um, the uh, x values, and then it actually puts a comma. So just like you did in algebra class. Um, and let's see what the series name does. Oh, yuck, score. Th that won't work. So you can put X, Y like that. I'm going to click close over here. So that's kind of clever. You could put the X and Y. On a bigger chart, mine's really small here, it, it would work just fine. Here it kind of clutters it up. I just wanted to show you that as one option, though. I'm going to control Z, control Z, control Z, control Z. What's control Z? Ooh, I need to control Z. Oh, that's undo. Now I want to add a trend line. Now there's a few ways you can do it. If you can click on the um, data points and right click, you could see add trend line. And this trick works in 2003 and 7. Add trend line. Now uh, this is totally different. This dialog box is totally different than earlier versions. You have some options for different types of trend. We're going to say linear, and I'm going to come down to the bottom. Totally awesome. R squared. R squared is uh, coefficient of determination. It's the influence x has on y, not causation. Just um, how much of the variation in y can be explained by the variation in x. And then we want uh, the equation on the chart. I'm going to click close. No way it did that equation that quickly. I'm going to point to this label here, and when I see that cursor, four-way arrow, I'm going to click and drag down. Now, with it still highlighted, I'm going to try and right-click it and go to Font. And I want to increase the font like to 16. Click OK. Unbelievable. There's the equation. That takes a while. Uh, that takes a long time if you're doing it by hand, right? Y equals MX plus B. B is the intercept x is the uh, x value, the independent variable you throw into this function. And then you put of any value there, there's what you multiply the x by, there's what you add. And then this little function pops out y, the f of x. I always think of functions as a machine, right? You put in any x you want, and it calculates and spits out an answer. There it is. Uh, there's our line. 
That's all of the y values that this predicts. The slope of this line is that x. r squared, again, that is coefficient of determination. The influence x has on y, not causation. Uh, uh, let's see a, a few more things. Uh, we're almost running out of time here. I'm going to scoot this over here and uh, come down here. We could do um, correlation. I'm going to type it here. Correlation, which is usually represented by R. And I'm going to do it right here. Uh, correlation is the strength and direction. Strength and direction. So I'm going to do it right here. And there's two functions in Excel. There's equal uh, e either, I don't even know how, there it is, Pearson. Pearson. And it says array 1 and array 2. So you're not quite sure which one is the independent and the uh, uh, in, um, dependent variable. But once you have that, you can click on the f of x button. Zoop, and up here in the functions argument dialog box, if you click in this, it says array instead of independent, and array two is the dependent. So all we have to do is highlight um, with our cursor there our independent, and then click over here. No way, I can't get to those values that are underneath here. But watch this. If you can click in D1, you can use your arrow key to get to D2, and then hold Shift and down arrow until you get to the 11th value. Click OK. There is correlation. That means uh, it's positive. That means it's a direct relationship. And it tells you the, the strength. Uh, 0.74 is probably pretty strong. All right, let's see if we could do a few more things. I'll show you a few more tricks. I'm actually going to move this out of the way. These will be uh, linear regression uh, tricks. First off, I want to do a couple more functions. And I want to show you how to name some ranges. So I want to highlight like this. And this is called the name box. You click in there. And I'm just going to type x and then enter. Whoa, that range is called x now. I'm going to highlight this, click up here, and type y, enter. You can test to see if you did it right. Point to the drop down arrow and point x, it got it. Point to the y, it got it. Let's look at a few more um, uh, functions built into Excel. How about slope? We just talked about what slope is. Here's the function for slope equals slope. Hey, they named it really smartly. And notice this screen tip was different than Pearson, right? It says known y. So I'm just going to put y. And if you're typing your, your arguments into a function, be sure and look at the screen tip. You can see there's a little comma. So it, if I type comma, watch what happens to the screen tip. It jumps to the next uh, bold argument. So you, need, you know you need to put your x's now. Uh, and there it is. Because we've named them, we didn't have to go up and highlight them. Let's do another one. Let's do intercept. Another function, if I spell, I'm a terrible speller, in, intercept. I probably spelled it wrong. Uh, and let's, this function's called intercept. In 2007, you have this drop down. You can double click it. And otherwise, in earlier versions, you have to uh, type it all out. And there it is. Y, we need a Y, comma, X. Close parentheses. Uh, we did Pearson. Let's try uh, the uh, same, uh, um, a different function that does the same exact thing. Uh, equals, um, now I can't even remember what it's called. Cor, yeah, correlate, Corel, right, Corel, there it is, Corel. Array 1, 2, oh, so this one we have to go up because we don't know which one is the independent and dependent. So I'm going to click on the f of x. And sure enough, uh, array 1 is should be numbered in a reference. What about this one? Is the second range of cells. I can be numbers, names. Well, it doesn't even tell us here. Well, I'm going to just assume that that's x and that's y. Boy, that's a badly designed uh, dialog box. Let's click OK. Hey, we got the right answer there. I'm going to actually uh, move this whole formula over. I'm going to point to the edge like that and move it. That's the move cursor. And then I'm going to type um, correlation. And uh, finally, uh, there is a function for r squared. 2 equals r squared. How about that? Just rsq. Isn't that cute? Known y's. Uh, we can just type our y, comma, x. And then tab. Hey, look, I did the same thing there. I'm going to move this. I forgot to put a label. You always want to put labels. And I'm going to put, um, it's actually coefficient of determination. 
Now I'm going to come up here and double click because I want these to be a little bit, this column to be a little bit wider. And there you go. There is some uh, some data entry, some XY scatter diagram with trend line and uh, that cool little feature there. And then some built-in functions that will help you do your linear regression. All right, Igor's class. See you next YouTube trick.